Me personally, I'm a, I'm a narcissist. <laughs> and so I just want to be, I just like being centre of attention and it's just the easiest way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Here we are. I kind of followed Jamie about in a previous band of his taking uh, photos of him and stuff because that was my, my prior goal was to be a photographer. Um, and then one day he comes to me and said, do you want to start a band? And I said, I can't play a musical instrument. He says, I'll teach you. Three years later, I still need to teach. Yeah, yeah. You, really, you, really, you really do. Yeah, I don't know why. Our dad plays guitar. And then I think he encouraged you to play guitar, or you just wanted to. Yeah, I think I definitely got some encouragement or something. And then because we had two guitarists in the family, I was told to play the drums, so I did. I never <laughs> looked back. Yeah, we've all, we've all kind of got like taste in, in different areas that are not what you'd imagine given listening to our music. There's a song called um, Paradise by the Dashboard Light by uh, Meatloaf, which uh, if you've heard of it, it's, it's wonderful. And um, me and my mum used to sing it as a duet when, we, when I was really young. And then I found out that it was about someone losing their virginity. <laughs> <laughs> South by is a pretty big accomplishment. Yeah, so we've got yeah. That's that TikTok thing we've done. Yeah, we're, time we're actually ready. breaking up. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much it. <laughs> Do it so that we can fund our uh, like renting and um, um, at the moment I'm addicted to uh, uh, like sugar drinks, <laughs> so I need to keep that going. Yeah. Or I'll crash. Well, yeah. <laughs> and uh, at the same time, worldwide success, biggest band in the world. Somewhere in the middle. And the I feel like they are keen to get involved in the show. Like they want to shout, they want to have a conversation with you. We're doing the set all the time. Yeah, <laughs> Shouting yeah. thing. Yeah. It's like, I'm just like, okay. They <laughs> to be um, less embarrassed to like something. Yeah, which, uh, to enjoy themselves. Even. Yeah, it's sometimes. A British show. Because we mainly play London shows, and a lot of time in London, uh, people like it, but they don't want to show that they like it too much because it's. Um, Humiliating, but um, <laughs> here they can just enjoy themselves, which is quite nice. We were quite surprised that there's a there's a source, a small group of um, people that already know the words, which is pretty astounding yeah. to us. Yeah. Like we're only sort of just building that in the UK, where like our hometown show and our London show and our Brighton show, there'll be people that know the words and will sing along. But there's there's people singing along who are still three and a half thousand miles away. It's like nuts to us. No matter what type of music you can make, you can build a small but hardcore fan base across the entire planet because they can discover you without you having to get into record shops in their country, in their local town, get in the newspaper, get in the media and all that sort of thing. And I love that, that's amazing. But the problem with it is, is that it means that everything that you create, there's no way of paying for it and nobody does pay for it. So like, how do you get to that kid well, now that they like your band? It's like a complete, you know, nightmare and nobody's solved it. Conundrum. Conundrum. Everything seems to be influenced by what happened almost like 30 years before it. So the 90s revival of all of these like Britpop bands and grunge is from the 60s garage and pop and like the disco indie from the noughties is from the 70s mm. and now it's supposed to be the 80s I guess but then eventually um, pop will eat itself which I think is a yeah. common expression because yeah. you just take influence from the past to the point where you don't create anything new mm. to why I think um, a lot of uh, stuff like grime music from the UK um, seems to be the only new type of music which um, it's a shame because I can't write grime music. But... <laughs> I think that nowadays uh, pop music, um, at least from my opinion, which again counts for very little, is um, it seems the lyrics seem to be a, a, a second to the the beat and to the the melody or the the sound of the backing music, the arrangement of it. The lyrics don't seem to be as important anymore as long as they're clear. Mm -hmm. Whereas it's nice to have um, 
songs where the lyrics are equally as important, harder to like dissect because uh, I've always felt with songs that I've appreciated, it's not something that hits you straight away, it's something that you have to put a little time into and then you actually start to understand the song and you have a connection more to the artist, which happens, um, in no way am I saying it doesn't happen, but it seems like a lot of good like pop music is now just about keeping the syllables short and catchy. Right. Yeah.